This is uh, Caroline from V Technologies. How are you? Um, just wanted to um, say thanks for taking some time out of your afternoon. Um, it is one we wanted to get started right on time today because we do have um, a hard stop at two. Um, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, we will be on mute, so um, if you have questions throughout, um, please just put them into the chat pane of your control panel, and we'll try to get all the questions answered at the end of the presentation. Um, and then um, we're just going to go ahead and get started then. Um, we have Bruce Beatty, uh, Director of Business Development over at Pitney Bowes, um, along with Scott Mills at Visible Supply Chain Management. These are our two partners on the post office side. Um, we thought it'd be a great opportunity to have these guys um, come in and just talk about the post office, leave it kind of a little bit of an open forum so you can ask questions um, and we can get questions answered for you regarding the post office. So Bruce, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thanks very much, Caroline. Uh, we're gonna run through a relatively brief initial agenda, uh, go through some uh, pre-formatted questions that we think are probably uh, lurking out there, and then uh, give you all a chance to ask your own specific questions, and we'll do our best to answer all of them as we, uh, as we get through the presentation. So we'll start off with a little background on Pitney Bowes, a little background on visible supply chain, and then talk uh, really about the USPS and get right into the meat of the presentation. So Pitney Bowes, for those who don't know, uh, you know, we've had a long-standing relationship with the Postal Service, almost 100 years now, uh, providing physical and digital mail and uh, processing technology, you know, initially for mail in the early years, um, and then from about the, the mid-70s on, uh, we've been a significant player on uh, parcel services as well, and uh, we process about 15 billion pieces of mail. Um, we do shipping and tracking services for eBay and PayPal and the USPS itself. Um, we drive international shipping for many of the largest retailers uh, in the country, including uh, Macy's and Nordstrom's and some international retailers as well. Um, expedite a lot of e-commerce returns through our Nugistic subsidiary. Then we provide low-cost residential shipping, leveraging the, the USPS network. So long history there, uh, not new to... Uh, the technology and excited to uh, talk more about Postal and how we can help you. Hello Scott? everyone, this is Scott Mills. Yep, this is Scott Mills of Visible Supply Chain Management. Um, just to kind of introduce us, so we are the rate providers to PB and VTech, um, and we have over 25 years of supply chain management experience. Um, as we have dove into the industry, we've become USPS experts uh, if by chance there's something that I don't know, we have plenty of resources that will know the answer, um, and we're able to answer all of your USPS questions and needs. And then also um, something that we do offer uh, for those customers that are doing 500K in spend for parcel, uh, we offer analytics. So we can actually break down your, your billing profile and be able to show you what you're shipping, how much um, accessorials you're being charged, uh, and kind of show you where you could actually leverage USPS to save money. And as you see, uh, there's my email. If you have any additional questions and want to reach out after this meeting, uh, feel free to do so. Thanks, Scott. Back to you, Bruce. Yep. So from a high-level perspective, uh, the merchants, obviously the whole exercise for all of you in logistics is to be as efficient as you possibly can and where you can save uh, is, is critical for your business and uh, delivery timing and time and transit for your customers is critical as well. So um, merchants save when shipping with the USPS. Uh, I think that uh, uh, there's lots of misinformation out in the marketplace um, and we're gonna try to walk through some of those in the, in the upcoming slides. But you know the postal service has made big changes over the years, and they now have a wide suite of delivery options that balance both cost and delivery time, much the same way that the major carriers do. Their sweet spot obviously is in residential deliveries, where they've got uh, you know the largest uh, force of delivery agents in the, on the planet who are delivering to all those residences every day, 
and that's an opportunity for folks to uh, take advantage and, and leverage that for um, the best possible pricing. Um, discounted pricing has come to uh, the fore on, on Postal. Um, everybody knows that there are pretty standard prices uh, based on, on, on volumes with the Postal Service, but through the partnership with uh, Visible Supply Chain, uh, the technologies uh, is in a position to offer uh, discounted USPS pricing to help the postal the, the postal service rates be even more effective for you. Uh, postal services improved their tracking, obviously delivered to all addresses, including uh, FPOs and uh, all of the military bases. They offer free packaging, and they do offer free pickup. Um, and we'll talk more about all of those things as we uh, as we get through the presentation. And I think the one of the gating things uh, in terms of the scope and the and the postal service, the, the rise of e-commerce, um, the agreements with Amazon and eBay, eBay and PayPal, um, and the volume that those very large retailers have brought to the postal service, and the supply chain requirements that they put on them in terms of delivery and visibility for tracking have helped the Postal Service to become uh, a very um, a very good supplier in the market, um, certainly uh, in the same category now as all of the other all of the other major players. So what has attracted Amazon and uh, Walmart and all of these other players is leveraging that residential delivery capability for the Postal Service. You know, FedEx uses the Postal Service for last mile delivery, so does UPS. Uh, and uh, um, and Amazon is uh, certainly the largest among those. An opportunity for you if if it's your parcel mix and the type of customers that you uh, that you ship to. So what are the sweet spots with the USPS? USPS is in the best position to provide the best, most efficient service if you are shipping direct to consumers, uh, shipping parcels that are under five pounds, but especially under one pound. Um, shipping smaller boxes that weigh up to 20 pounds. And that's a, that's a sweet spot that a lot of people don't realize. Everybody knows that the Postal Service is really good with lightweight packages, but their ability to handle small but heavy packages um, may be a very interesting opportunity for, uh, for all of you. Um, and when you need two or three day delivery to uh, more distant zones, uh, postal pricing in comparison to three-day select or some of the other expedited services that would have to be used in order to expedite a ground delivery uh, becomes a very attractive uh, opportunity. Uh, and then lastly, delivering to places where the post office and FedEx don't go, um, you've probably exercised that pretty well today because there really aren't very many alternatives to, uh, to some of the things that we've listed here below. So the first misconception we want to tackle is tracking. Uh, for years, the Postal Service um, lagged behind the major carriers in their ability to provide delivery status uh, during transit for packages. Um, you know, years ago, they introduced uh, an induction scan and a delivery scan, so you did get uh, the, the two ends of the equation, but visibility in between was lacking. Um, through the work with Amazon and through investment in technology, um, the Postal Service has now put automated handling equipment and scanners in place that provide in-transit visibility. And there are up to six scans as packages are received by the Postal Service, move through their network, and get delivered on the back end. And those, uh, those scans and the information associated with them are available to you as the shipper and to consumers when they use the tracking link that are associated with uh, with a package uh, with a package label. The second question that comes up frequently is about package pickup, um, and it's important to know that USPS will pick up your packages. Um, they will do that uh, at no charge. Um, you have to request a pickup. Um, but there is a website that the Postal Service um, provides to you as a, as a shipper where you can schedule pickups. So you can essentially schedule a daily pickup 
um, and then go in periodically if you have a very big amount of shipping that you're doing on a particular day and adjust that and, and let them know very much like the carriers would uh, if you're going to need something, uh, a vehicle that has more capacity than what they normally come to pick up with. Uh, there's no minimum quantity for the pickup. Um, you just need to let them know the prior day. But again, that's a, the, the scheduling tool is a very good workaround for that. And then the third is where the USPS delivers. Um, you know, obviously the Postal Service does deliver to every address in the country, regardless of location. And because they deliver the mail to those locations every day, they don't have surcharges. They don't have residential surcharges. They don't have rural surcharges. They don't have extended areas surcharges. And so for deliveries in those regions, um, the Postal Service becomes a more and more effective option uh, as an alternative to uh, some of the major carriers. Scott, you want to grab this one? Absolutely. And actually, that was a, a great way to kind of uh, transition over to this slide. So misconception number four is USPS pricing isn't competitive. Um, as Bruce was just saying, one of the biggest mistakes that um, people make is that they compare apples to apples when it comes to USPS versus UPS or FedEx. So they look at commercial based pricing, priority mail, flat rates and regional rates, and they just look at it uh, side by side and they're like, oh, you know, even though USPS is competitive in those areas, you're not seeing those surcharges, those additional charges that are actually happening on the back end of those UPS and FedEx um, uh, shipments. So absolutely, commercial base pricing, uh, we as uh, Visible, we're able to provide discounted pricing on that. That is absolutely competitive. Um, we're able to go with uh, commercial plus pricing, which is even a lower discount. Um, USPS is absolutely competitive when it comes to um, their competitors. But the, the biggest thing that I can stress on this is those surcharges. That's where the price comes in, where um, you don't get those from USPS. So it's definitely important that one, you do look and you see what is USPS charging on their commercial based pricing, their priority mail, how does that compare but then also be aware of those surcharges and add those into the equation so that you are truly seeing the difference between the two. Um, go ahead to the next slide, Bruce. And then misconception number five, so USPS delivery is not competitive. So right here, we're able to bring a chart and show you the on-time delivery. Um, as you see under the mail class, this is package uh, services. And as you can see there, it's everything's above 85% of on-time delivery. Obviously, there are factors that play into those ones that weren't delivered on time. Um, we don't need to go into all that. We know that weather exists. But uh, USPS has done a great amount of work to make sure that their packages are delivered on time. And because they have that week window where they're delivering seven days a week, unlike UPS and FedEx, where they're only going five days a week, for uh, USPS delivery, you're looking at two to three days on some of the um, shipments. Whereas with FedEx and UPS, you're actually getting closer to that third day. So they do deliver on time. They are competitive when it comes to delivery. Um, and they're definitely an option. Now, we're not always saying everything should go USPS, uh, but it should be a part of your portfolio so that you're getting uh, the savings that you deserve. Back to you, Bruce. Well, that's, that's the list of pre-canned questions and the overview that we wanted to present. As Caroline mentioned early on, the intent of this presentation is for you to be able to get your questions out, and uh, we'll do our best to answer whatever questions you have about Postal that's, uh, that you're curious about. Awesome. Thank you, um, Bruce. Thanks, Scott. Um, to all the attendees out there, if you have questions, now is your time to ask anything post office related that you've ever wondered. Um, these guys are great resources. 
Um, we did have one question from Richard. Richard, thank you. Um, he was looking for Scott's email. I just wanted to mention that uh, this is being recorded, and we will send a follow-up email with a recording of the webinar as well as um, some contact information for you. So we'll follow up with you, Richard, on that. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to um, add those into the questions pane on your control panel, um, on your GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll get them answered for you. Okay, some questions coming in. What are the over length fees? So maybe we're talking about um, dim weights. Yeah, Scott, I think that uh, you want to take that one that's likely related to oversized packages and, and, and fees. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah, that, that's going to differ. Um, on size and how much you you do go over that. Um, yeah, I need a little bit more more information on on what they're experiencing. Oh, I see something come in. Yeah, if I may, uh, I, for oversized packages or large packages, um, it is certainly worth doing some quick analysis of the carriers versus postal. They do not all use the same uh, dimensional restrictions. Uh, they don't use the same dim factors, meaning size of package versus versus weight. And therefore, you know, being able to compare um, in real time the cost of a particular package based on its dimensions and weight. Um, is really advantageous to you, and that's mm -hmm. something that VTech provides through the through the software. Is that you know, uh, you, know you you can do that on an ad hoc basis and quickly calculate what the uh, what the variance is. Absolutely, and, and I, I one one number that I can give out to you. So just looking at um, over maximum limit charges. Granted, this this will be on a case by case basis, but. We did see an increase where if you're going over their maximum limit, um, in 2017, it was a rate charge of $150. Um, that's actually increased quite a bit for in 2018. If you're over their maximum limit, uh, you can get charged up to $500 uh, at, in addition. So granted, that's on a case by case basis. Sometimes you'll, they'll be lower than that, but that's the kind of money you're talking about when you do surpass the uh, maximum limits um, for UPS and FedEx. And again, as we said earlier on, uh, you know, the postal sweet spot is really packages under 20 pounds and packages that are smaller in nature, the ones that fit their automation equipment that are really generated around, uh, around postal and, and smaller packages. So yeah, you're gonna see higher surcharges on very large and very heavy packages for the postal service. That's, that's not their sweet spot. And that's why, you know, none of us on this call would recommend that you switch entirely from one carrier to another. Um, you know, the efficiency play here is to consider adding another carrier to the mix who may have certain sweet spots that you can take advantage of while continuing to use the more effective services of UPS and FedEx where they're appropriate. Agreed. Yeah, I'll tell you how it's going. Awesome. And I think we actually had a dimweight webinar that we did with, um, you know, the with for the post office, and we can um, provide um, a link to that as well to give you even more information on that because that's pretty. Um, we see that a lot from other customers who are looking to reduce costs that are associated to dim weight type packages. So um, it's a good opportunity to look at the post office, definitely. Um, question here, um, APO, FPO forms, customs forms. Um, I think that's more of a Starship question. 
Um, we do, on the Starship side, um, many of our interfaces to the ERP and financial systems support um, line item detail to help with those types of forms. And um, we leverage Pitney Bowes to be able to, um, you know, print customs documents. Uh, another question here, you mentioned post office is best used for small boxes up to 20 pounds. What is considered small? 12 by 12 by 12 or four by four by four? Uh, there's actually two distinctions. Um, when we said small boxes, that there's a niche uh, within small boxes, boxes that are less than a cubic foot. Um, they have special pricing for the Postal Service, uh, extremely aggressive pricing because those boxes fit through their automation systems um, best of all, and they can be really efficient when sorting and processing them, and therefore they pass that savings along in a, uh, in a, in a rate plan that uh, you would see automatically analyzed by the, the Starship software that would, that would compare that. So um, as an example, uh, you know, a half cubic foot box, something that's six by six by 12, um, that has um, a trailer hitch in it, right? That trailer hitch might weigh 15 pounds, but that package is not rated as a 15 pound package. It's, it's rated based on the cube and the discount for that is substantial. Generally, you'll see a five or six or more dollar per piece savings in a, in, a, in a product like that, that is small enough to fit in a half in a half cube box that weighs in that 15 pound range. Um, super, super good deal for anybody who's shipping tools, um, uh, car parts, anything that, that, that's really heavy that fits in a small package. Awesome, thanks for the question, Anthony. Um, another question. How is this integrated into Starship? Um, do we need to discuss rates or discounts with the Postal Service, or are the rates provided by Pitney? And maybe I could take the first part of that, and if you guys wanted to um, chime in. Um, so on the Starship side, um, what, all you really need is to have the Post Office module, and that automatically integrates um, with uh, Pitney, and it also offers you the discounted um, rates through Visible. So it's a combination of the three companies providing you, you know, the electronic um, postage, the labels, as well as the discounted rates. Um, and Scott, those, Bruce, those discounted rates. That? Scott, why don't you talk about the, uh, the commercial plus pricing and uh, and how that relates to the to shippers? Absolutely. Um, so, yes, uh, CPP is uh, an extra discount that we provide to those customers um, that qualify for it. So it's, it's based on volume. Uh, but that's kind of one of those things where our analysis comes in. So what we love to do is um, be able to receive a billing file of your UPS or FedEx um, shipment. We'll actually bring that into our analyzer tool. We'll be able to break it completely down. And if your volume's at the right amount, um, we can actually give you an additional discount because that's kind of how our the post office works, right? When you have higher volume, that means you're sending more stuff out to where they're going and they can offer more discounts to bring those down. So CPP or commercial plus pricing um, is one of those and it usually starts around 635 a package. Uh, it's going to one pound, going to zone one, sorry. And obviously, as you increase weight and stuff like that, it goes, the, the price increase. But um, definitely something to look at if you're doing a volume. I would say if you're getting up to 500K in parcel spend, you absolutely want to reach out to us and see if you can qualify for that CPP pricing. But there's three tiers of, there are several tiers of postal pricing. Uh, retail pricing, which is what you get if you just walk up to the window. Commercial base pricing which is what uh, most commercial shippers would have. And there really isn't a volume constraint on that, on the commercial base pricing. A commercial plus pricing and the special pricing that um, Starship has through Visible Technologies is actually a discount well below 
commercial base pricing. And uh, that's not volume dependent. You get that through our agreements with, uh, with visible supply chain and Starship. And so regardless of your volume, you'll get a discount well below uh, commercial base pricing. And then, as Scott said, if you have even more volume, if you have a, if you are a high volume shipper, uh, some an analytics can get an even lower price that's uh, that's specific to your volume. But in those first categories, the Starship pricing is going to give you the very best available price in the marketplace, um, without interacting in the postal service and without regard to uh, your your basic your volume your your volume yourself because we're aggregating uh, volume across all the Starship customers. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, and then also, um, Ken, on that question, too, um, you know, there's no, obviously, um, you don't have to sign any agreements with us. I mean, just by the mere fact that you um, set up the post office um, module in your account, you will just get those prices coming through to Starship, so you'll see those. Um, one thing that I wanted to also mention regarding the DIMMs, um, we talked about that uh, maybe a question earlier is that um, the most one of the most important things about that is that you actually enter the dimensions into your Starship application um, because that is a requirement in order for um, Starship to be able to you know get the the best rate for you um, on those smaller packages that we talked about. I know some shippers just like to have the weight read from the electronic scale and not go through the process of entering the DIMs, but it does become an important factor. Um, and related to that, Starship does support cubic scales, so the CubiScan scales where Starship can read not only the weight, but the length, width, and height of the box can electronically be um, brought into Starship, so there isn't much user interaction that has to happen in order to um, get that data in to get the best rate um, showing through on the, the ship screen there. Um, another question here, does Starship integrate with QuickBooks Desktop for post office shipping? Um, Starship does have integration with um, QuickBooks Enterprise and QBO. So if you're using any either of those flavors, um, we basically would, um, you could run Starship, connect over to that data, read and write, um, and create labels that way. Another question from Ken, is there an added cost for the post office pricing module or to get this set up? Um, Ken, you do need to have the post office module in Starship, um, but outside of that, um, that's pretty much the only, you just have to have a license of it. Um, and um, set up, we can, you know, obviously get you um, set up and configured on that um, so that you can start utilizing the post office and the discounted rates as soon as possible. Great questions coming in. Um, any other questions, please put them into the questions pane on the control panel, and we'll try to get those answered for you. Guys, it looks like we don't really have any other ones coming through, and I know that we're half past. I know we had scheduled this for an hour, but um, if it only takes a half hour, I think that's great. We can get every, all the questions um, answered. Um, we'll, like I said, post this out. Um, we'll send a follow-up email with the um, information um, for the contacts, and um, your account manager, your Starship account manager, will be reaching back out to you just to answer any questions. Um, about functionality or um, pricing, whatever it may be. Um, so we do appreciate that everybody spent the time that they did with us today. We hope you learned something on the post office. And um, be on the lookout for our next webinar. We'll be reviewing um, international shipping specifically. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Caroline. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Talk everyone. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks.